Hey guys, it's Heidi with AMP Home Church, and welcome back. We are now halfway through our study, Seeing the Unseen by Randy Alcorn. It is a 90 day devotional as we set our minds on eternity. We are on day 45 already, wrapping up yet another week. These videos come out Monday through Friday, so be sure to subscribe and tap that little bell icon that's somewhere down here somewhere. Um, tap the little bell icon, and that will give you a notification each day when these go up. And then, of course, Saturday, um, the first Saturday of every month at at noon Eastern time, I do a YouTube live on my channel, Heavenly Minded Homeschool. So come and join us. It's just a time to kind of chit chat and catch up, see how you all are doing. And then Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have our Bible service each week. Um, we are back in Matthew this week. And um, I don't, I don't want to give too much away. I don't know what all he's got for us, but I know it's going to be good. Um, come and join us for that. That live streams out of our Facebook group and also the band app. So all of those links are down below, so you guys can come and join us um, on whatever works for you, and we can kind of take this time to go together, study God's word, learn and grow. Um, which I feel like we've been doing a lot of through this study. I know I've gotten so many great messages from so many of you, and it's just been fantastic. I post the study questions on our Facebook group each day so you guys can leave your responses and discuss and talk with one another. Um, love seeing what all you guys have to share. So let's go ahead. I think the video here is going to be pretty quick this week, but in the blog post there is a lot of, oops, I think I just goofed it up. There are a lot of scriptures and things to read and look into. Um, so we've got lots of really exciting stuff to dig into today, which is super duper exciting. Oops, stop. It's moving. It's doing something. I bumped something. Hopefully it'll stop. I don't know. Let's just read. All right. So the topic today, the awesomeness of God's creation. Creatively speaking, God is just warming up in our universe. On Mars, the volcano Olympus Mons rises more than 84,000 feet, nearly three times higher than Mount Everest, with a base that would cover the state of Arizona. That is insane. That is huge. The valley. Marineris, probably mispronouncing all of these, is a vast canyon that stretches one-seventh of the way around Mars. Dozens of our Grand Canyons could fit inside of it. Can you imagine that? I did not realize that. The New Earth may have far more spectacular planetary features than these, and the New Heavens may have greater stars and galaxies than our current cosmos. On the present earth, God shows himself through natural wonders. Since the old earth is the prototype of the new, there's every reason to believe he will show his greatness and beauty the same way on the new earth. Imagine what we might find on the new Mars or the new Saturn and Jupiter and their magnificent moons. I remember vividly the thrill of first seeing Saturn's rings through my new telescope when I was 10 years old. Five years later, I heard the gospel for the first time and came to know Jesus, but the wonders of the heavens helped lead me to God. How many times in the new universe will we be stunned by the awesomeness of God's creation? Some perspectives from God's word in Isaiah forty-five twelve, it says, My own hand stretched out the heavens, I marshaled their starry hosts. And then in Isaiah 48, 13, he says, My own hand laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand spread out the new heavens. When I summoned them, they all stand up together. Sam Storms was quoted saying, The physical world exists preeminently to display for our eternal joy the artistic creativity, endless power, and manifold wisdom of its creator, the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Steve DeWitt said, Beauty is both a gift and a map. It is a gift to be enjoyed and a map to be followed back to the source of the beauty with praise and thanksgiving. So the topic today, diving a little bit further into this conversation of the new heavens and new earth, um, is the article on epm.org forward slash meaning heavens, and it's called, What Does the Bible Mean by the Term New Heavens? So this is where I'm going to kind of open it up and let you all kind of dig into this because... I messed up my internet. Hold on. Um, because there is so much in on this topic, and there are a lot of scriptures to really sit down and go through. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do with your families today. Um, that is not the right one. So if we go to epm.org forward slash, what was it? Meaning heavens. <laughs> Meaning heavens. 
I'm getting there, guys. Um, possibly getting there. There are so many great resources. I know we've shared different ones um, on Amazon that you can watch and see from a creationist standpoint as we look through the different natural things we see in the world around us, and especially looking at the starry hosts and the planetary processes and existences and all of the things that go with it. But go ahead. Here it is. So if you pull up on epm.org, meaning heavens, what does the term, what does the Bible mean by the term new heavens? And it was a question that was asked, what does the Bible mean by the term new heavens? And why is it referred to as heavens, plural, but then switches to heaven, just regular heaven? So um, Andy, Randy Alcorn goes through, literally from Genesis to Revelation, he goes through so many different scriptures here discussing the differences between this and how we can see and understand these different things and how this will all play together. I'm going to go ahead and just read down. Let's see. I want you guys to pull it up so that way you guys can go through, really pull up the different scriptures and look at each of these. I'm just going to read the bottom portion here. It says, the new heavens will surely be superior to the old heavens, which themselves are filled with untold billions of stars and perhaps trillions of planets. God's light casts the shadows we know as stars, the lesser lights that point to God's substance. As the source is greater than the tribute, Tributary, God the light is infinitely greater than those little light bearers we know as stars. The Bible's final two chapters make clear that every aspect of the new creation will be greater than the old. Just as the present Jerusalem isn't nearly as great as the new Jerusalem, no part of the present creation, including the earth and the celestial heavens, is as great as it will be in the new creation. Can you guys just imagine? I mean, I know sometimes I'm totally taken aback. Come out at night and you see the stars and all this stuff, or you watch different videos and see things, and it's just like mind-blowing how God perfectly crafted all of these things, and then to know that this is just a, a taste, just a sampling of what he is going to do. It's mind-blowing. While some passages suggest that the universe will wear out and the stars will be destroyed, others indicate that the stars will exist forever, like Psalm 148, verses 3 through 6. Is this a contradiction? No. We too will be destroyed by death, yet we will last forever. The earth will be destroyed in God's judgment, yet it will last forever. In exactly the same way, the stars will be destroyed, yet they will last forever. Based on the redemptive work of Christ, God will resurrect them. Earth is the first domain of mankind's stewardship, but it is not the only domain. Because the whole universe fell under mankind's sin, we can conclude that the whole universe was intended to be under mankind's dominion. If so, then the entire new universe will be ours to travel to and inhabit and rule to God's glory. Do I seriously believe the new heavens will include new galaxies, planets, moons, white dwarf stars, neutron stars, black holes, and quasars? Yes. The fact that they are part of the first universe and that God called them very good, right, we saw in Genesis, means they will be part of the resurrected universe. When I look at the Horsehead Nebula and ask myself what it's like there, I think that one day I'll know. Just as I believe this self-same body, as the Westminster Confession put it, will be raised and the self-same earth will be raised, I believe the self-same horsehead nebula will be raised. Why? Because as part of the present heavens, it will be raised as part of the new heavens. Will the new planets be mere ornaments, or does God intend for us to reach them one day? Even under the curse, we've been able to explore the moon, and we have the technology to land on Mars. What will, what will we be able to accomplish for God's glory when we have resurrected minds, unlimited resources, complete scientific cooperation, and no more death? Fascinating topic, right? Will the far reaches of our galaxy be within reach? And what about other galaxies, which are plentiful as blades of grass in a meadow? We will expand the borders of righteous mankind's Christ-centered dominion, not as conquerors who seize what belongs to others, but as faithful stewards who will occupy and manage the full extent of God's physical creation. Guys, these are huge topics and very, 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 very fascinating, um, especially if you've got kiddos or you yourself are ones that are into, uh, my husband is a total space nerd, and so this whole topic and all of these things is one that is a, a hot topic in our household. So 
pull this up, read and look into all of these different scriptures, pull them all up so that way you can look at all of the different ones um, as we go into this and kind of think about this topic. Then, of course, come and share your two cents and things that you find. Maybe if you have a favorite um, creationist uh, show or documentary or something like that that you'd like to share, please come over to the board and do so um, there in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you guys hopefully Saturday for the live on the Heavenly Minded Homeschool YouTube channel and then Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern for church service. So that will all be at all the places that's all linked down there. So hope you guys are enjoying the first half of our Seeing the Unseen study and Monday we will be back to start in on the second half. Bye guys. <laughs>